Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Thank God we praise and worship Jesus. Bless his holy name. Hosanna to the Lord. And glory and praise and honor be unto him. Amen. What a blessing, isn't it? It's a wonderful blessing to be in God's house this morning on a Sunday morning. Y'all excited about Jesus? Amen. If you're happy and you know it, say, amen. I didn't say to say amen. <laughs> say hallelujah. <laughs> no, you missed it. <laughs> okay, well, it's good to be a Christian. It's a joyful life. And um, we really had some good time fellowshipping uh, and Hop- I keep saying Clark's, but it's Hopkinsville, and the servicemen's work there, or um, Pastor Keiko is there, and he'll be there preaching, I think, this morning, and then tonight also he'll be preaching there for them, so we missed it. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of feel that's what was happening, that he needed to be there, and I think that's more effective, and there's a lot of young people there in servicemen's work that God needs, God needs preachers, <laughs> amen. He needs people that can be inspired to get into ministry, and the servicemen's work is a blessing to that. And I figure, I, I, in my heart, I felt it would be more effective for him to be there and to, um, to minister to them because I want to see God's work grow and expand everywhere. And, uh, but he, he, um, he's going to be preaching there tonight also. At, I need to get, I think it's 6.30. I think church is at 6.30 tonight. <laughs> yeah. I was about to say 7.30, but I think it's at 6.30 tonight. I think they have the same, same schedule that we have for the evening service. And so there will be no church here, of course, because <laughs> he's my pastor, and I'm going to be there as much as I can. I was there Friday night, and I went there yesterday, and I'm going to go back tonight, joyfully go back tonight to fellowship, be in the service, and learn, and just be a part of what God is doing. Amen? So um, there will be no church here tonight. How are y'all? But we're invited to go there. <laughs> so if y'all want to come, you know, come on, you know. It don't happen, but once every so often, uh, the, the man of God is able to come into this part. He goes different places. So if you're able to, 6.30 tonight at a servicemen's home, we're just going to have church with him one more time. Just support the work here. Let's go there, support there, and, and just be a part of it. And, and who knows all that God will do. Amen. So we encourage you to do that. Come on. Thank you all that came out yesterday. That was a blessing to see y'all came out. That was a blessing. If I can push you just one more time, a little bit more, one more time, you know. I know it's a, a sacrifice, but we don't do it every week, every month, every year, uh, just once in a while. Amen? I was trying to get him to come here, but he had al- already made plans. He already have his hotel room and everything there. So um, come on, 6.30 tonight at, at the same church in Clarksville, Hopkinsville. You know where it's at. <laughs> you know, leave a little bit early uh, if you can for traffic. Coming back is fine, but going there was quite a challenge. But um, if y'all want to come, I encourage you to come. Let's, let's do it, and, and praise the Lord. All right, let's go on with the message for this morning. Reading to you from the Gospel of John, chapter 15. we we'll read uh, verse 1 through 7. John, chapter 15, verse 1 through 7. It said, I am the true vine, and my father is the husbandman. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away, and every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can ye, except ye abide in me. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me ye can do nothing. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch, and withered. And men gather them, and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. If ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. I want to use uh, verse 4 for a text for this morning. Abide in me, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself except 
it abide in the vine, no more can ye, except ye abide in me. And using that and on this passage, I want to preach about stay connected. Stay connected. Let's look to the Lord in prayer this morning. Marvin, would you please pray? Praise the Lord. I want to preach about stay connected. And I want to use as an illustration something all of us are familiar with. How many of you all have a cell phone? Yeah. Exactly. So we can all relate to this, right? <laughs> and, uh, of course, not everything will be, you know, applicable to the situation. But uh, in one way that, the, you know, I was getting ready to plug my phone in and I was praying for a message and that's how the message came. Right, because nothing was coming to my heart, and as soon as I, it, it was dead. The phone was dead. You know, the phone was completely dead. I couldn't do anything with the phone, and I needed to use the phone because I wanted to listen to the, listen to the Bible while I was doing some work around the house. I like to put on, you know, the King James version, Alexander Scorby, and listen to the audio Bible while I'm working, and then when I get a chance, I will read. And so I was, I wanted to listen to the Bible, and so I tried to use the phone, and it was no good. It was dead. And as soon as I plugged it in, it powered up. And uh, I could use it, immediately use it. And so the, 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 it spoke to my heart how we understand this concept of the cell phone being connected and that even though, if, if you have even 1% of battery life, as long as it's connected to the source of power, you can use it as long as you want to. And so it, it, it gives you what you need. Right? It gives you what you need because it's connected. And so that's what I want to use is that if it's connected, even though the battery life of that phone may be so low, 1% or 2%, it is still and always will be usable as long as it stay connected to the power. Amen? As long as it stay connected to the power. And so the, this is the important, is importance of always staying connected to God. There will be times in our life when we feel drained from various things that are happening in our life. There, there are different situations that arise, burdens, uh, whether it's financial or physical or mental or family issues. And all these things come. They come on a daily basis or a weekly basis. These things accumulate. And if we allow it, it can drain us. Amen? It can cause our battery to go down really quickly. <laughs> really quickly, man. You can be on top of the world in the mountain at one moment, and within another time, you'll be, you know, laying flat on the ground like a pancake. <laughs> you know, your battery been drained. But what I'm saying is, and you feel that, that you can't be useful enough to fulfill your daily task, but if you're connected to God, that's where the power comes from. If you're connected to God, that's where the power comes from. That's where the Lord can put strength back into you. That's where the Lord, as he told, uh, 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 I think it was in the book of Daniel, where Daniel was fasted and he was hungry and he was waiting on God for a revelation. He was weak and an angel came unto him and spoke the words to him. And he said, when the word of God was spoken to him, life came back into him. He was strengthened by the word of God. He was strengthened by the things that were spoken to him. And so I'm talking about stay connected to God at all times. Amen. Don't let the, there be a disconnect. And how do I stay connected to God? Well, there are various ways. Number one, the most important way is our prayer life. Is our prayer life as we talk and stay in communion with the Lord. We need that prayer life. We need that life of prayer. We need that to walk with God, to stay in, in communication with the Lord. Also, we stay, in, we stay connected to God by reading the Word of God. Amen. And these things may sound simple, but it's absolutely vital for our Christianity. Have you ever allowed your mind to drift or get a bad attitude or get the wrong thinking or, you know, all those things? And you can trace it right back to these things. Man, you know what? I really haven't been praying like I should. I really haven't stopped and considered God in this situation like the Bible told me to in all thy ways to acknowledge him and he shall direct our paths. 
right? And so we can trace it back to that. And a lot of times we, we get disconnected not, by not, and I'm not talking about just going through the motion here. You know, sometimes you can go through the motions. But I'm talking about true worship. Where you're in the place of worship, where you're worshiping God, you're feeling the connection. And that has nothing really to do with the, peop- with the person next to you, or it has nothing to do necessarily with the preacher. It's a personal thing that we as an individual have to stay connected to God. Amen? We have to stay connected and we have to be able to, to feel the, the, that true connection with God in our prayer life, in our Bible reading life, in our worship life. And this can be worship in church. It can be worship uh, when there's not church activity going on. You know, you're spending time praising God, right? Giving God glory. It's more than just a song. You know, the, in the church we have an order of worship where we have singing and praise and prayer and preaching. But worship is more than that. Worship is a lifestyle. Abraham worshiped God. Noah worshiped God. E- Enoch worshiped God. They didn't, all, they didn't have a, a, a church service where they went to and they were preached to and their, their, their music uh, was playing and all this stuff. But they worshiped God by their life. They stay connected. The Bible said Enoch walked with God for three Hundred years, amen. Three hundred years. This man served God and worshiped God and walked with God when it seems like nobody else around him wanted to. Noah was the same way. One man found grace in the sight of God. This whole society that he was living in was so wicked. The Bible said every man, every the imagination of their th- and their thoughts, their imaginations, and their actions were altogether evil in the sight of God. But the Bible said Noah found grace. He was worshiping God. He was staying connected. Amen. He was staying connected. When uh, after the the flood, the Bible said that God gave commands to these men, these three men, Shem, Ham, and Japheth, from whom the entire world is populated. We're all related, folks. Whether we like it or not, right? We're all related, you know. And and, and I was messing around. There's no... I said there are only different shades of gray, brown. That's all it is. <laughs> That's all it is, right? Some of them in the middle, some on the lighter side, some on the darker side. We're all the same, amen? We're all the same. Uh, uh, I don't think, you know, if you, you put a piece of white paper next to your face, that's real white. So if you don't match that white, you're not really, really white. <laughs> and this is black, amen? We're all different shades of brown, <laughs> you know? We <laughs> Trying to be very careful, I don't offend anybody. <laughs> but we're all related. And we're all related. And we have to stay connected to the Lord. Amen. These men, regardless of what was going on in their, in their society, Abraham, I was saying about the three sons of, of, of Noah, when they came out of the, uh, the, um, the ark and they began to you know, be fruitful and multiply and, 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 the, and, and they began to populate the earth. It wasn't long after that before they all began to drift away from God. You know, uh, they began to go in their own way. They began to do things, uh, idolatry and all these things. They quickly adapted. The devil quickly polluted their mind. And they went away from God. And so God looked for a man and he found Abraham. He found Abraham in Ur the Chaldeans. And, and the Bible said he called him. He called this man and said, come and I will bring you to a place and I will bless you. Now from you, I will raise up a mighty nation and from you and your people, I will send the Messiah and he will come and he will give his life as a ransom for the souls of all mankind. But Abraham, the Bible said, he walked with God. He stayed connected. What I'm trying to say, there was no one around them that was really serving God. There was no one around them that were going after God and pursuing God in the right way. But these people, you look at them in the scripture, they, they may be an individual or there may be a group of people or, or whatever it is, but they never get disconnected. Amen. They didn't let the world come in and draw them away. They didn't let the world cause them to think uh, like, you know, look at what everybody else is doing. It must be right. Uh, they were not right in the days of Noah. They were all disconnected from God. They were all gone in their own ways doing their own thing but there was a man that was connected to God called Noah and God saved him and God saved his family and it's the same for each and every one of us we have to stay connected to God we have to stay connected to Jesus because once you put that connection on like I said with the phone it was usable again amen it was usable again and so we stay connected to God God can use us for whatever his purpose is for our life 
We have to stay connected. There is a continuous flow of power from God to us. A usable vessel. God wants us to be usable vessels to Him. And, uh, and there are ways to fulfill this. Uh, and, and, and one of the ways we have to stay, like I said, we have to stay in connection. As He said there in our Bible, we now read verses 4 through 6. He said, Abide in me, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can ye, except ye abide in me. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit, for without me ye can do nothing. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch, and wither it. And men gather them and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. Amen? And so he shows us the importance of staying connected to God. It shows us the importance uh, as Christians to stay absolutely close to God, to stay connected, to make sure that there is nothing that is stopping you. Have you ever plugged in your phone? I've done it many times. And I thought it was charging. And then I come back an hour later and it was still dead. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? The connection it didn't, it didn't make a good connection. You've been there. I'm using this phone thing as an illustration because we can all relate to it. Like I say, it may not be the same in every case, but we can take what's right out of it. And so we have to make sure we're properly connected. You know, it's possible to go through the formalities and not be connected. It's possible to pray and not be connected. It's possible even to read the Bible and don't get anything out of it because you read it all the way and then you forgot what you just read. I've been there, amen, because our mind is like in two different places drifting. And so you open the Bible, you read the whole thing, and you're like, what did I just read? You know, and you got to go back up and say, oh, okay, that, that's, what I was just, that was, that's what I was just reading about. And so you have to let it sink in. You got to let it sink in. And so if you're going to stay connected, you got to make sure you're properly plugged in. Amen. 100% plugged in. Make sure that thing, little zigzag thing saying it's charging. Amen. Make sure you get a sign of confirmation that the charging is taking place. And once you're connected and you stay connected to Jesus, uh, he said, that's when your life becomes fruitful again. Amen. That's when your life becomes absolutely fruitful. He said, abide in me. And I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can ye, except ye abide in me. We can bring forth a lot of fruits in our life. We can be filled with the fruits of the Spirit, which is joy and peace. Faith is one of those fruits also. Righteousness, holiness, godliness. Our life can be very fruitful this morning. We can be fruitful in the work of, of, of reaching other people for God. Sharing our faith, spreading the light, being the salt of the earth. We can be absolutely fruitful for God when we stay connected to Jesus. You will know when that connection, how, you, how many of y'all want to know when the connection is, is happening? Amen. I'll tell you because it will be hard for you to walk by somebody and to look at them or have a conversation with them and not want to tell them about Jesus. Amen. And not want to share that light that is in you. That light that is burning on the inside. Amen. Every time you see it, you're like, man, I got to tell this one about Jesus. I got to talk to this person. I'm not saying every time the door will be open, but I'm talking about there be a fire on the inside. There's a burning fire because there's a connection and God is saying, Tell that person about me. Witness to that one about me. Share the light with that person. Tell them how good God has been. Amen. There will be a burning desire in your heart. I want to pray. I want to go to church. I want to read the Bible. I understand sometimes it's a sacrifice. And it's a, it's a, it's a, it's, it's, it's an, it puts us in a, in a position to where we have to make a decision. But I'm going to make it. And I'm going to be where God wants me to be. Amen. I'm going to go to the to service tonight at Hopkinsville. Amen. I'm going to make it there. Why? Because it may, it may be something that, that I didn't want to do. Now, I wanted to do it, <laughs> but it may be something you don't want to, but just do it anyways. Who knows what God can do in your life? Amen. Amen. Who knows what the Lord can do? We just got to have that fruit. He said, if you abide in me and I in you, he said, you will bear the fruit. The connection has to be made. Make sure you're properly plugged in. Amen. 100% plugged in. So when you come back an hour, you see that thing says 100% charge. 
right? You're not disappointed. And so we're talking about staying connected. You got to connect that through that way. God wants us to be a vessel that is usable to him. Now listen to this in, in, in um, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 14 through 21. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 14 through 21. It said this, he said, Of these things, am I in the right place? Okay. Okay, of these things, put them in remembrance, charging them before the Lord, that they strive not with words to no profit, but to the subverting of the hearers. You know, it doesn't pay a lot of times to get to, to argue with people about religion. Amen? Because a lot of times, I mean, sometimes it's necessary, because some people are really confused. Not argue, but to have a... a, a, a proper discussion with someone but we shouldn't argue with people about the word of God it doesn't do anything good for you it makes you all messed up get you all stirred up and to the other person they're not going to listen to it if they don't want to listen to it you know and so he's saying here he said of these things put them in, in, in remembrance charging them before the Lord that they strive not about words to no profit, but to the subverting of the hearer. He says, but you study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needed not to be ashamed, but rightly dividing the word of truth. But shun profane and vain babblings, for they will increase unto more and more ungodliness. When people argue about the things of God, the word of God, and trying to bring this argument and that argument and this debate and that debate, it doesn't do anything but create a mess. Amen? It creates a mess. I don't argue with a Jehovah's Witness or the, or the Seventh-day Adventist. I, I have a question. I'll tell them about it. But I don't argue with them because they believe one thing. And I, I, I'm trying to, you know, I will share with them the truth. But when it creates a, an, an argument, a vain babble, as the Bible calls it, it just doesn't get anything done. Amen? It just doesn't get anything done. It's not edifying for the body of Christ to stand up and argue about things. Let's talk about it in a civil way, right? So he said, But shun profane and vain babblings, for they will increase unto more ungodliness. And then this is a very important part. He said, And their words will eat at that a canker or a cancer, of whom is Hymenaeus and Phil Philetus. These were two men that were doing that in, in the time. He said, Who concerned the truth have erred, or they gone in error, saying that the re resurrection is past already and overthrow the faith of some. So here, way back then, they were telling people, oh, the resurrection already took place. Not, not Jesus' resurrection, but the resurrection of the just. And so he's, they, they lied to the people and told them, oh, uh, Jesus already came. <laughs> Jesus already resurrected the people. And the people said, well, well, what's the point of me living for God? You know, if, if the resurrection is already taking place uh, as what there was going on at this time, they said, well, we're just going to give up. And quit serving God. You see how dangerous these things are? Amen. If you don't know the truth of the Bible, keep your mouth shut. Learn it. Amen. Because you may think you know something and you open your mouth and you can destroy a soul that God wants to save. And so we have to be very careful. That's the reason why he says, study to show thyself, approve unto God, a workman that needed not to be ashamed, but you must rightly divide the word of truth. And so he said in verse 18, he said, Who concerned the truth have erred, saying that the resurrection is already past, and have an overthrow the faith of some. In verse 19, he said, Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure, having this seal, the Lord knoweth them that are his, and let every one that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. But in a great house, there are not only vessels of gold and of silver, but also of wood and of earth, and some to honor and some to dishonor. If a man therefore shall purge himself from these, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctify and meet for the master's use, and prepared unto every good work. The Bible is telling us how to stay connected to God. We have to study to show ourselves approved. We can't get caught up with all these crazy things that are going on around us. Uh, we're not ignorant of it. We, we're not uh, you know, burying our head in the sand and, and everything, but we have to study. 
We have to study to be quiet and mind our own business, the Bible said. Amen. We have to study so we can give people a right answer. The Bible said in the book of Peter, be ready to give a man an answer concerning the faith that is in you. They should ask you about your faith. You have to, st you have to be able to let them know about it. And this all comes with staying connected. So as you're connected to the vine, your life is fruitful. Your mind is fruitful. Your whole Christianity is fruitful. You're growing in the grace of God because uh, you're connected. And there's a second point I want to share is, uh, and you understand this, uh, using from your cell phone, that, that when, you're, when you're plugged in, you, you always stay charged up. Amen? Your phone is not going to die if it's plugged in. You understand what I'm saying? Your phone is not going to die and if it's plugged in and its connection is right, that phone will always stay charged up and if we stay connected to God our life will stay charged up also amen our life man we will be full of faith we'll be full of the things of God our life will be full of the of the of the spiritual blessing that God wants us to have when we stay plugged up just like that phone there will be a charge that is always happening to that phone the battery is always being charged up I understand you can kill the battery you overcharge it you know so I'm not going that way but I'm saying taking it from the perspective what I'm saying here, as long as it's plugged in, the battery is going to be full. Amen? It's going to charge it to full. And so it is when we stay connected to Jesus. Our charge in our life, our spiritual charge, our spiritual battery will always be charge. Amen? You say, well, preacher, I'm running a little bit low on my spiritual energy. You need to be connected so you can stay charged up. My joy is low, my, my peace is low, my happiness is low, my desire for God is low, my, my spiritual energy is low, my, my zeal to, to see God working in my life is low. Hey, you, holy moly, did I preach that long? <laughs> you can get Ashley. Boy, I'm just getting warmed up here. You can come to... <laughs> we'll, 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 we'll leave it with that. <laughs> I don't want to keep you too long. <laughs> but um, stay connected, okay? You didn't get all they get this. Stay connected. Stay connected to Jesus. Uh, there will be a constant supply of power, energy, strength, faith, love, peace, joy. All these things will be in your life. Uh, and the last thing I'll share as she's coming is this. When that phone, now I'm using the phone as an example, right? Once you, even though it's, it's dead, if you keep it per connected, the first thing is it will always be useful. If we stay connected to Jesus, our life will always be useful. We'll be that usable vessel. The second thing is, if we stay connected, the battery will always be charged up. Amen? Our life can always be charged up. Always be charged up if we stay connected. And the last thing is, which is very important for us, is if you keep your phone connected and it's charged up and you got to go and you grab that phone, you don't have to get in your car and look at it and say, oh, man, it's dead. Amen. It's always ready. It's always ready. And so if we stay connected to God, we will always be ready to go also. Amen. Amen. When the Lord calls your name, you don't have to die in fear. If the rapture takes place, you don't have to live in fear. You've been connected with Jesus. You stayed connected with Jesus. You live your life. Uh, you can be like those. I'll, I'll just share it real quick and go not going through the whole thing since I'm out of time. <laughs> but he talked about the ten virgins. Five of them were wise, and five of them were foolish. The five that were foolish didn't charge, charge up their lamp. They didn't bring any oil. They didn't stay connected, if you will. But the five that were wise, they brought, they brought oil. They brought what was needed. And the Bible said when the bridegroom came, they got up, trimmed their lamp, and there was oil in there, and they went in. They were ready. Amen? They were ready. We got to be ready, too. Amen? we got to be ready, and God can help us. How do I stay ready for eternity, preacher? He said, abide in me. Jesus still, he gave us the answer. He said, abide in me and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself except it abide in me. No more can ye except ye abide in Jesus. But without Christ, we can do nothing. So the message this morning is stay connected. You stay connected, you will be useful. You will always stay charged up, and you will be ready to go. Amen. And you can, every time you plug your cell phone, maybe it'll come back to your mind. Amen. It doesn't matter how low that battery is. It can be useful if it's connected. Amen. And so 
As you bow your heads and close your eyes in reverence to the Lord this morning, she's going to play and sing. Let's spend some time in prayer. You feel a little bit disconnected this morning? What do I do, preacher? Get connected. Plug in. Plug into Jesus one more time. Father, I preach your word this morning as by your spirit. As by your spirit, God, that you will speak to each and every one of us. Here and those who, God, are worshiping with us online this morning, let the word of God speak. Let the word of God speak to us, God. Let the word of God be strong in our life. Draw us closer to you, I pray, in the name of Jesus. We give you glory and honor. And this time, Lord, we turn this over in, service over into your hand. That you help us all, God, to connect with you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, she's getting ready to give her a new saying. Let's go ahead. Let's all find a place to pray. She's getting ready to sing.
Praise God. God bless you this morning. Pray you have a wonderful rest of the day. Enjoy your Sunday in the Lord. And remember, there will be no service tonight, but we'll be in Atkinsville, 630. I think that's what time it is, 630. Yeah. If you have any doubt about the time, just let me know. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. And God bless you all. Have a wonderful. Let's go. And for all you join us online, we just pray you have a wonderful day in the Lord. Remember, there will be no service tonight for those of you who join us in the evening service. But we'll be back on Tuesday for Bible study at 730. So catch us then, right? And in the meanwhile, keep stay connected. Keep your battery charged. And be ready. Amen. Let's close in prayer. Father, thank you for the service. We give praise and glory to you. We honor you and worship you. And ask God that you continue to guide and help. Bless in all that we do. Protect us. Keep your hand upon us. And provide for us all that is necessary. And the things that we desire. We give thanks to you now in Jesus' name.